Welcome, everybody, to Two Drunk Dudes in a Gun Room. Hey, today I've got Chris with Deuce Outfitters Mission, uh, Missionary uh, Ministry. Ministry. There we go. See, I'll, I'll get it right, man. I have, I, I've got too much blood in my alcohol. That's the problem. I haven't been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> so how you do, how you doing today, Chris? Oh, we're doing good. We're doing really good. We uh, we had a, a family tragedy here about four weeks ago that we're trying to get through. But other than that, we're doing really good. Better than we deserve. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, so... So tell everybody a little bit about your guys yourself and uh, a little bit about the organization, and then we'll get into uh, your military background. Well, we, uh, I, uh, I'm a pastor. Um, I didn't want to be a pastor. I, uh, God called me to it and I fought him tooth and nail and I lost that fight. (laughs) Um, You know, it's, there's such a huge calling our veteran community um with this suicide epidemic that's taken place and um just the the failure on on our federal government on that level on the va level and it just you know it takes it takes grassroots mom paw operations who literally care to impact um you know, I, uh, my wife and I, we bring them in and we just make them, they're part of the family from the very first phone call, you know, and, and so, um, you know, I, uh, my dad is a, is a Navy veteran. He served off at Cuba during the coast of Cuba during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, I was Air Force, um, security. I wanted to go into pararescue. Okay. Um, had some medical issues and they said, well, you never should have made it through MIPS. So see ya. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> wow. But that was back in, I mean, I went into, I went in in 86. Okay. So, um, came out, it came out of there. And of course I horsed around for, for a few years and, trained cutting horses and worked for a couple big cutting horse outfits and um, worked on a couple big ranches and uh, got just got tired of working my tail off and not making any money and uh, ended up going into law enforcement, which really doesn't pay any better, but um, I I don't even know how, I don't even know how that happened. I'll be honest with you. I don't even remember how that happened, but, uh, I, uh, I ended up being a member of the National Gang Task Force for about seven years, and I worked the outlaw motorcycle gang side, and wow. uh, I just got tired of the red tape and the politics involved, even in law enforcement. I mean, you know, yeah. we think the politics are bad in the military. It's just as bad, if not worse, when it comes to local law enforcement, and then... Yeah. You know, I, we were contracted out for the U.S. Marshals, me and my captain. And that's how, you know, we fell into that whole deal. And uh, so, like I said, I, I was in law enforcement for about eight years, got tired of the the red tape and all the and everything that comes along with it mm-hmm. and uh, went to work for the railroad. OK. And uh, I railroaded for. A lot of years um <clears throat> and we uh, my wife and i we uh we we were running an, a commercial outfitter business on my rest days from the railroad which i had three days off and and such and of course even at that time you know part of what we did was just trying to put bibles in people's hands you know yeah um, if, if you can't tell, I'm pretty strong in my faith and, and I encourage it. Yeah, um, absolutely. and, uh, so, but I just got tired of, you know, everybody, you know, in the commercial side of things thinking they're entitled to a, a full bag limit and entitled to a trophy animal and i was just like i just i did it for long enough that i was just to the point where i was sick of doing it yeah 
And uh, a friend of mine, I called him up and I said, dude, I am shutting this circus down. I said, I don't even know if I'm going to hunt anymore. Oh, wow. And uh, he put me in contact with a gentleman. Um, and I can't remember his name for the life of me at, at right now. I want to say what, Bud DePlatchett was his name. And I can't remember the name of his nonprofit, um, but it was it was a veteran nonprofit, and we got to talking. And he said, "You know, wh- how would you feel about just taking veterans out?" And I was, you know, and, and we started talking about the suicide epidemic and impact, and you know, and at that time, I didn't realize where God was going to take this. I'll be honest with you. And I was like, yeah, you know, that didn't, doesn't sound like a bad deal. I can do it three days a week, you know, just on the week on my rest days, you know, and well, God had been calling us to do it full time. I mean, he was really leaning in hard and, and I just fought him tooth and nail. I was like, there ain't no way I am not, you know, I was number two on the seniority board. Oh, wow. You know, so I had choice days off. I had, you know, I was up there. I had the, you know, I just, I was high enough on the seniority board that life, I pretty much skated, you know, yeah. and, and there was an incident that I was involved in. And because I was number two on the seniority roster, they decided they were going to make an example out of me and oh. fired me on the spot. Oh, wow. It happened on December 15th of 2015. And, uh, and I mean, I go through the whole, the whole circus, you know, I pee in the cup and give them my statement and they take other statements and they said, well, we'll, we'll get back to you, but you're done. And so I, I got home. I mean, literally I was probably six hours earlier than what, what I normally was. And, Ms. J was like, you're kind of home early. What's wrong? And of course, I know I looked like a whip dog yeah. tail between my legs. And and uh, I said, well, I said, as of about three hours ago, I just joined the ranks of the unemployed. And I thought she was going to lose her mind. But she looked at me and started laughing. And I'm like, babe, th- what, what do you find so humorous about this? I mean, you know, we got we had four kids. We had grandbabies. I mean, it's like Christmas is right around the corner. There yeah. is no humor in this situation. And she just kept laughing. And she finally said, well, now you can be obedient and do what God's been telling you to do. She said, did it ever occur to you that this happened because of your disobedience? And wow. from that, you know, I made a couple phone calls. And from that point on, we were off and going full ministry full time. I mean, it was like I, I left the railroad one day and I was full full on ministry the next day because I had still been training under my head pastor anyway. Mm-hmm. And, but I just didn't want to do it full time. And so uh, we just started working with different organizations and and. Uh, you know, we uh, we use hunting as that platform. We hunt white-tailed deer, mule deer, coyotes, waterfowl, uh, turkey, and, you know, every component that you can use to hunt them. And uh, we've been doing that since 2015. And, uh, you know, the, it, it, I can't say that we ever struggled because whenever we thought it was going to be rough, God came through and he was like, I got you. Don't worry about this. If I called you to this, I'm going to pull you through it. So just have faith in me and walk it out. All right. And so, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been since 2015, we've served over 300 veterans from across the United States. We house them here with us. We do it out of our home. Um, <clears throat> Ms. J uh, cooks the meals for them, provides the meals. Um, their housing is available for them if they want to use it. We have a drash tent. I'm sure you remember what that is from your days over in yeah. the box. Yeah. 
Yep. Um, but it's, you know, we got it wired with electricity. It's got all the comforts of home in it. It's got a pellet stove, a microwave, coffee pot, mini fridge, all that good stuff. And uh, starting uh, 2022, we started paying for all the hunting licenses. Oh, wow. So, um, you know, a veteran comes out, he sees us, he shows us his license. We reimburse him for his tag. Okay. And so, you know, really the only expense that he has at that point is the expense of his travel to get there. Right. Other after that, I mean, he's, everything's been covered. We don't want, we never wanted money to be an issue to keep people from seeking out healing. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I'm speaking from experience, you know, I've been in dark places that if it wasn't by the grace of God, I wouldn't have made it through it. He's the one that pulled me out of the, the crap hole, you know? Um, and so, you know, it's about sharing time with these guys, um, giving them that, that feeling of family, um, being able to be transparent, Yeah. you know, as men, we find it real hard to be transparent with our spouses because we got to be the big tough guy. You know, we're the war fighter. Yeah, you know, I think that's been, a I think that's a real normal um, situation. You know, just about every veteran I had, the the last person to find out how bad things really is is the spouse, spouse yeah. and the kids. You know, yeah. I'm I'm in the middle of writing a book now because uh you know. There's so many things that that I want my kids to understand about their childhood that absolutely you know that they kind of hold on to as as puzzles, I guess. Yeah. How I what why I was the way I was and, and the problems that was going on. So I, I thought a book was was the best way. And I'm about halfway through it. And my sure. editor, believe it or not, is actually my daughter. So she's she's learning it firsthand. Very nice. So uh yeah. So yeah, I, I absolutely get it, man. And and well, as as yeah. I got help, that's kind of what's brought me to that point. You know, before I never, I never talked. To my, I, as a matter of fact, I pushed my, I did the opposite. I pushed my family away from me. That's that's really sure. what I did. Well, and, and the sad thing is, you know, the suicide de- epidemic, the, the VA and the federal government don't, don't even pay, pay enough justice to it. Yeah. They throw that number 22 around like it's a Lay's potato chip. Yep. And you know, I, when you tell people, so three years ago, I, I was talking to a buddy of mine that was on the board of directors for mission 22. And at that point, cause it was, it was right at the beginning of COVID mm-hmm. and, or it was right after the first session of COVID. I can't remember how that, what the specific on that, but at that point it was 138 veterans and active duty military a day committing suicide, you know, and, and that number hasn't gotten any better. We're losing more war fighters per day right now that are, that are veterans and we're losing them to suicide than when we have ever lost daily in a conflict. Yeah. And explain and I think, that to me. I think a lot of it comes back to the fact that, the, um, you look at the VA, VA has a program for everything, but they don't have anything that's all inclusive. And, no. and so when you're, when you're fighting this problem, uh, me and uh, Brad Borders, we talked about this, you know, one of the things that, that I really have a, a problem with is, is there should be no reason in any state that a veteran is homeless. I don't care. Oh, I agree. You know, but there is no program out there that can I mean, it is a massive problem. You, you know, you can't just house them. You got to figure out, you got to solve the problem that caused them to get homeless to begin with. Absolutely. With, you know, whether it's substance abuse or alcohol, then you got all the, the legality part of it of trying to get their driver's license and IDs and back yeah. in the workforce. There is no government agency that's going to want to spend that money. And, and no. I hate to say it, but that's what it comes down to. And the bottom line is they don't care. Yeah. I mean, that is it. Lock, stock, and barrel. They do not care. You served your time. You did your job. Thank you. Goodbye. Yep. 
that pisses me off. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Um, you know, and, and, and the other side of that is, though, the family needs to go through healing as well. Right. So the veteran and the family need to heal as a unit. Now, granted, not at one shot. I think that and the way we kind of work things are, you know, the, the first trip out, it's you and me or you and, and one of our board of directors who, mm -hmm. you know, our board of directors is all made up of guys that went through our program that are all veterans that all had a battle with suicide at one point or another. Mm -hmm. And because they went through our program and it was as effective as it was, they started volunteering and then they become so affected by what we were doing that they were like, we want to be on your board and we want to make this thing even bigger and better. We need to get to in front of more people. Yeah. And so, um, we're very blessed with our board of directors. Uh, you know, one of them, uh, he's out of Phoenix, Arizona, and I see him a handful of times a year, but I talk to him every day. Mm -hmm. um, it's crazy because we've all melded like a family. We're all like brothers now. Yeah. You know, we all know each other's business and, uh, <laughs> you know, we all have an answer. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're right. But, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just caring. It's, it's quit caring about yourself and care yeah. about somebody else. Yeah. Um, you know, right now we're, our major project is, and I don't, I'm sure you've heard of the equine uh, therapy or equine yep. healing programs. So Western Nebraska doesn't, so anything West of Kearney, Nebraska, which is in the middle of the state, mm -hmm. there is nothing for veterans and it's limited in Eastern Nebraska, even Wow. Nebraska, really? Nebraska doesn't care about its veterans. Wow. I would have we, never thought. Yeah, it's 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 pathetic. It really is. We have the worst VA across the board. Yeah. And I hear that. I hear that from multiple veterans. So it's not like I'm just sitting here puffing smoke. I mean, th this is what I'm being told. Yeah. Well, I, I can vouch the one in Lincoln is, is yeah, that's where my dad died at was the VA. And, uh, I, you know, the experience was so awful that I, I just, you know, I refused. I, I said, you know, I will, I'd be damned. I am not going to be that guy that dies in a VA hospital. I just, I, just, I won't. You know? Right. And the guy the the doctor that was on call that night, night, you know, he, my dad spent good 10, 12 days in, in ICU before he passed. And when he finally passed, the doctor that was on call was actually a psychologist and he was getting his license to be an MD. See, you know. that's just it. Yep. They bring in student doctors that are yep. just there to earn enough time that they can go out in the real world yep. and either start their own practice or go to work for a major hospital. Yep. And to me, that is wrong. Yeah. You know, so, but it's a system that's broken and you and I, we ain't going to fix it. Yeah. That's just all there is to it. So what we have to do as concerned brothers is impact it the way that we can. Um, you know, my phone is on 24 yep. seven. I'm available to every veteran, even the veterans that are listening to this. You know, if you need somebody to talk and you're battling the demons at three in the morning, don't do it alone. Call me. Yep. I, we, I'm we, not afraid to battle the demons. Yeah, I, I, I've actually, been there. we we created an app exactly for that, you know. So yeah. you know, people that have our I not in it. I've had people, you know, message me at one, two o'clock in the morning, and I hear my phone go off, and I've laid there in bed talking to people I don't even know, yeah, like, just about anything, you know, until they tell me they feel better and and yeah, you know that. They and that's all it, it takes. Yep. 95% of these guys that are in that moment, and that's exactly what it is. It's a moment. Yep. And all they want is to be heard. Yep. You know, there's a reason God gave us one mouth and two ears. Yeah. 
And so we spend a little more time listening and a lot less time jacking our jaws. Yep. And so, you know, for us, that's what it's all about. I mean, yeah, we're going to, we're going to see some amazing country. We're going to see some amazing animals, but ultimately it's about you being on uh, a ridge or, or, you know, in a tree row or in a duck blind and just decompressing. Yeah. And, and having those moments where there's somebody there that if you have a question or you just need to talk a sounding board, they're there and they aren't going to, they aren't going to claim to have the answers because the reality of it is what you experienced and what I experienced, they're two different things. Yeah. So I can't say, Donald, I, I, I know what you're saying, man. I've been there. I've done it. No. Yeah. That's not a fair statement yeah. at all. But what and it I goes even a little bit is, deeper than that, you know, like I was talking to one of my other shows, you, you got to, you got to look, you know, I know it within our group, you know, we give people a hard time, the ones that stayed on the fobs and they never went outside the wire, and the pack clerks and, and stuff like that. But you have to look at people's life experiences, you know, somebody that, that grew up, hearing gunshots every day in their neighborhood may not be affected as much by the gunshots as a mortar round that they're not used to versus somebody who lived in a suburban area and and had a good upbringing and didn't have that experience. It it may just take a little boom and they got PTSD, you know? Well, and, and let's be honest for a minute, you know, not very many war fighters, came out of a well-groomed home. No. All right. So let's just call a spade a spade and be honest here. Most war fighters came out of jacked up homes, jacked up lifestyles, and they went into the military looking for security. Yeah. That's, that's why I joined. I joined looking for a job. Yeah. I, I had a wife and I had responsibilities. And then all of a sudden, you get rewired and now you're a reputable person, but only as a warfighter. Right. So when you come out, realistically, what skills do you have other than killing? Yeah. You're and right. Society doesn't understand that. No, no, they don't. And, and they also, you know, I don't know, you know, I know like the Navy and, and the Air Force, they've got a lot more, uh, technology as far as training and and the way they they train their their guys but the army like mechanics and stuff like that i'm going to tell you they're they're 30 years behind their civilian counterparts sure you know and it's a part of it's because you know we're a front line so it's it's about whatever we can do to fix it quickly you know let's change a whole part it's not about the money it's about what can we do as fast as we can get it up and going you know so you know, it's just like they try to always compare us to our civilian counterparts, but it ain't the same thing. No. You know, I don't get the, the, the college, you know, technology training with the latest equipment, and that's all I do. No, I've got PT requirements, rifle requirements, road march yep. requirements, you know, ceremonies. You know, I'm only working and, half the time. Right. And you don't know what it is that's going to trigger it. Yep. I mean. You a fella could be sitting there turning a wrench and drop that wrench and get himself in a position bodily and be like, and all of a sudden a flashback. And now all of a sudden he's in a full blown panic attack yeah. or PTS attack or a combat CSD attack. And it's like, what do you do with that? Yeah. He doesn't know what to do with that. Yeah. Because he's reverted back to where he was. Yeah. And so, you know, we're going to be, like I said, we're in the process. We're trying to get this ranch bought. Um, We need to raise roughly, we think, between $250,000, $300,000 for the down payment. And we're going to be working with the BLM Mustangs out of Wyoming, um, which is an amazing, you know, you, uh, you look at those animals and there's so many 
things in common, you know, as, as veterans, we've been assigned a number, a dog tag or, yeah. or, you know, these horses are assigned a government number and it's branded on their neck. Yeah. You know, they suffer PTSD. I mean, the, you talk about freak mode, yeah. you know, so in order to, to connect and all they want is to connect with somebody. They want a leader. That's because horses naturally or are a prey animal. They're not a predator. Right. So they're looking for protection. They're looking for a leader. They're looking for somebody to stand up and take control, basically. Yeah. Well, in order for an individual to to do that, they have to be transparent and honest with themselves and have their feelings and emotions in check when they walk into that. Yeah. And so we are going to be working with um, Amanda Helm out of Hooves, and they're based out of Ohio. Um, we will be a certified uh, horse therapy program awesome. through them. Um, and it's, it, you know, we're going to be able to bring these guys in for a week at a time if we need to. Um, we can bring a veteran and his family in yeah. and, and spend a week at a time with us if they want to. Um, because ultimately, we've got to heal the family as well. Yeah. There's a shocking statistic that not very many people are aware of. One out of every three veteran children that lose a parent to suicide is going to commit is capable of committing suicide themselves and more than likely will. I believe that. So, I mean, you look at that, we're not just dealing with, with a veteran. We're trying to keep that family together Yeah. and, and stop that, stop that uh, ripple effect because, you know, the misconception that, that our, our brothers are, are misconstruing is, well, if I end this, it'll all be better for my my family. And what yeah. they don't realize is the ripple effect that it causes throughout their their circle, their community. And it doesn't end with them. Right. It just makes things worse. Yep. And I just think that, you know, as men, if we sit down and have just honest conversations and and I mean, I, I personally, I don't have anything against a guy cracking a beer. I really don't, but I personally don't because right. I had, I had to deal with, I, I had to battle those demons. Yeah. And so I've been sober and clean for nine years now. Yeah. Um, but you know, if we're having honest and transparent conversations and our walk and our talk are matching up. That's another thing that's so important is don't be blowing smoke up somebody's rear end. Yeah. You know, that we, they, the, the guy that you're talking to doesn't need that. Yeah. You don't yeah. try to have to outdo him. Yeah. You know, just listen. Yeah. If he asks you for advice, you know, I always tell people, you know, you can take what I just said in a, a quarter and go have a real bad cup of coffee because that's about what it's worth. Yeah. It's my opinion. Yep. My opinion doesn't matter. And it's not necessarily fact, you know, but I, I agree with you and, and I post it, I don't know, once or twice a month, I'll post just a, a post about, you know, if you come across a, a veteran in crisis, you know, here's some things to, to remember and follow. And one of the things I, I put in there all the time is, you don't have to talk about the crisis. You can keep the conversation about the weather uh, activities. It's better to, to, I mean, we're not psychologists. So as, as the other person, unless he wants to talk about it and wants to get it off his chest, it ain't going to do him any good for me to pry and ask. It's going to, it's more of a selfish act because now it's solving my well, it's curiosity. You, it's you wanting to know, well, what's wrong with you? Exactly. And, and it's like, you don't need to know that answer. No, it doesn't matter. Right. It's, it's about getting shoulder. them through till tomorrow. Yeah. You know, it's just about, it's about selfless service yep. is what it's about. Yeah. And, and, 
you know, today's society doesn't know how to do that. They don't know how to communicate anymore. No, no. And and 90% of communication is listening. That's the key thing, you know, uh, and that's why, you know, um, uh, Steiner and I, have gotten to be such good friends is because we just think alike. I mean, he invited us out and, and we set up a booth out there and I mean, we just clicked like brothers That's awesome. and he's, you know, people are like, who are you guys? And we told them and they're like, we've never heard of you. And it's because, well, it's because all we offer is hunting. And if you're a Nebraska veteran, why in the world would you come look at us? Yeah. You can hunt in Nebraska anywhere you want because you're yep. in Nebraska, you know, part of the state. But, yep. you know, and that's why, you know, everything that we've been working with has been from across the United States, from Texas to to North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, yep. Georgia, Tennessee. We get I got four uh, veterans coming in from Tennessee this weekend to chase turkeys. You know, awesome. after that, I got five of them, five veterans coming in from Kentucky. Um, but what Jason and I and, and our team and and what we've what we've noticed is that we got to do something for the Nebraska veterans. We have to do something for the veterans in our own backyard. Yeah, because nobody else is, and so. You know, not that we're shutting it off to other states, but we need to focus on them now as well. Yeah. And that's the key reason why this equine healing program is is such going to be such a huge impact in Nebraska. Now, it'll impact other veterans, of course, if they, you know, if, right. if they want to come out and, and spend time with us, because I think, you know, we've been at it long enough. We've got a reputation that our walk and our talk match up. Yeah. You know, we don't, we don't try to blow smoke. We don't try to be miracle workers. We're just good old boys that give a care, you know, and that's what it takes. Say what you mean and, and walk it out. And, and, you know, another thing too, and, and I'm not knocking the big organizations. I really ain't, but Another reason why, to go back to what you were saying, the uh, um, mom and pop uh, uh, organizations, I think the reason why we're, we're so impactful is because, one, the people that are there legitimately care. Yes. And the other part is so much more of the money that, that, that comes in goes back to the veterans. Absolutely. We don't have that $500 million dollar you know, right. office building that has to be we maintained. We can skim off the top and pay yeah. ourselves a little bit. Yeah. Ms. J and I haven't taken a paycheck in seven and a half years. Yeah. That we're entering our eighth year. Well, our first hunt for year number eight is this weekend. Yeah. And, you know, everybody's like, well, where do you get your, how do you guys survive? Our clothes come from our sponsors. Yeah. You know, um, we don't, it, it's about impacting lives, saving lives, making a difference. Yep. And, you know, and, and I don't, we all know who I'm referring to when I say this, we don't pay our, our, our board of directors six or seven figures a year Yeah. or even eight, you know? Because it does, how is that helping out the veteran community? Yeah, it's not. You know, and I, and I get so tired of these veteran.orgs that say, well, I sacrifice, I deserve this. And I'm like, Joker, you sacrifice. What are you sacrificing? Yeah. As you get in your Mercedes Benz when you go home. Yeah. It's like, you don't even know what a sacrifice is. Talk yeah. to the dude that spent you know, four tours over in the sandbox. Yeah. That's yeah, sacrifice. You know, when you, here's, here's my thing. If, if I'm watching TV for four hours and I can see a half hour of the same commercial in those four hours, how much money could have went to the veterans or whatever the, the charity is that, that you're, you know, it's not just veterans, but 
whatever charity you're pushing, how much of that 30 second commercials that adds up to a half hour a day could have saved you. Absolutely. You know, I, I get you have to advertise or, or try to fundraise. I, I completely get that. You know, donations is how the nonprofit world operates if, if it's a legitimate nonprofit. Absolutely. But you don't have to, you don't have to become, and, and, and that's where everything goes wrong. You know, I, I said, you know, what I'm doing will never be a business, you know, no. and I, and I'm walking the, the line right now with uh, this uh, radio station that, that I'm putting together because it falls so close to having to have all these licenses and, and with the royalties, it's paid out based off of gross incomes and everything else. But I am not, I'm not going to become a business. I don't want it. Well, unfortunately, though, the, the, the financials are the evil part that is a necessity. Yeah. We just can't base it, base what we're doing off of that. You know, it's just like this facility. I mean, it's a, they're asking 1.5 for this equine facility. Yeah. You know, yeah, we can probably come up with a 20% down payment. But that property is going to have to support itself. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so what there you're looking at having to, to raise money, not on a, I mean, yes, on a donation base and a fundraising base, but, you know, you still have to raise money by hosting events that will generate revenue Absolutely. that can pay for the property itself. And at the same time, can go back into the nonprofit to help sustain it as well. Right. But so it's a vicious circle. But you guys are your own identity. You're not corporately ran is what no. is what I'm getting at, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, and absolutely. That's that's the area I don't okay. want to I don't want to go into. You know, yeah. I am I, get getting, it. I am getting licensed through BMI for, you know, the royalties and I I completely agree. This is why I'm doing it because I want these young artists that that get swallowed up by all the big places and algorithms, you know, I want to give them a platform where it's better and only, and, and it's their platform to talk. So I want them to get paid every time I play their song. You know, that's, yeah. that's the purpose of what I'm doing it for. You know, it's like Steiner and I were talking just today and, you know, he, he's had the opportunity to, to meet some big name guys face to face and talk yeah. to them. Right. And then he's like, well, how do I get a hold of you? So we can talk some more about this because, the big name guy is like, man, that is cool. I want to be a part of Hero Stock. Um, here, here's my uh, manager's business card. Get a hold of him. Yeah. And that's where you get it goes a hold to of him. Shit. Yeah, because you get a hold of him, and he's like, oh yeah, it's going to cost you twenty thousand to get us out there, and plus some hotel room, plus you know travel expenses. And it's like, well, there went my whole budget for the whole event. Yeah. You know, you're missing why we're doing what we're doing. Yep. Yep. And, and just like you see on TV, all these people that are are promoting all these big names, you know, I, I know, I don't care what anybody says. They're not doing it for free. You know. No. It's all and, about the jingle. Yeah. And and that's a, that's a quick way to turn me off. You know, I've, I've had a few people that I got pushed to the manager and then it just gets you know, I'm just a small little podcast. So, you know, they take their sweet time or responding. I don't chase people. You know, no. I ask if you want to come on the show and if you say, yeah, we're going to set up a time, I'm going to get you on the show. And that whole week that, that I'm airing, man, I share everything. I push, you know, you'll see probably 30 posts about, you know, your, your organization that week that I'm promoting it, you know, because that's, that's what we started this for. We are highlighting veterans and veteran organizations. That's what I do. You know, well, and that's what it takes. We have to get the message out there, a an honest message, a transparent message. Yeah. This is what is going on today with America's veterans. We're not going to sugarcoat it because yeah. nobody that doesn't do what's going on justice. No, I, I we agree. can't sugarcoat it. Yeah. So what we have to do is just be transparent. And if we step on some toes and hurt some feelings and then so be it. Yeah. 
But at least we were honest and we said, this is what's happening. This is why it's happening. And the only people that give a darn is the grassroots mom, pa organizations, because it's not about a paycheck to them. It's about impacting lives. You know, and and it's not that a mission that I'm going to ever take on, you know, I'm, I'm faithful to, to try and help veterans because I can't heal the world. But if you look across the United States, the mental health problem in, in America is, is far reached everybody. It's not oh, yeah, just it's veterans insane. anymore. You know, the drugs that, that have, you know, and I've seen it firsthand, you know, I, I've had drugs invade my family and the, the person that did it before and after they are completely two different people now. You know? Absolutely. And, and even if you get sober, the damage has already been done. You know? Absolutely. So it makes that coming back that much harder, you know? Well, dr- and ultimately, and this is what I tell guys, you know, I don't care where you're at in your walk with Jesus. I, you know, but what I'll tell you is if you trust me and you, and you, live your life honestly, like I, like I recommend. And, you know, I, I tell people, you know, what are you out? If, if I'm right, you win. Yep. If I'm wrong, what are you out? Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> you know, all you got to do is try to be a good person, yep. you know, and it's it, the crazy thing is, and, and this is how religion has, has screwed everything up because with religion, it's all about rules and regulations and controlling the masses. Yeah. That isn't what God wants. He wants a relationship. He wants you to talk to me or you to talk to him the way that you and I are talking right now. It's a conversation. That doesn't need a $1.5 million church. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. That that one point five million dollar or well, that's not fair because this property we're looking at is one point five. Right. But but, that, but I'm saying it, but you understand what I'm saying that that twenty million dollar church yeah. that that Mecca Church Center yeah. that isn't gonna that isn't gonna save my my soul any any quicker than the old Southern Church that I grew up yeah. in that that saw maybe 200 people on a weekend. And and that's, I've watched congregations change. You know, they, they were a small church. They raised some money. They got some loans. They had a bigger church built. And I have literally seen it tear congregations apart. Absolutely. It'll split them because what happened? They quit serving God. Yeah. They started serving the dollar bill. They started chasing the dollar. And, and I, like I said, I, I do believe um, I'm not a super religious person, but I do believe if you treat others the way you want to be treated, you know, it goes a long ways, you know. Absolutely. It doesn't. This is this is how religions come. And, and so I walked away from God for many years because I was down in Texas training cutting horses with my first wife. and. Uh, we decided to come back here to Nebraska for a visit and we stopped in and saw my folks and, you know, mom, my mama was like, well, are you going to, are you going to join us at church tomorrow? I said, yeah, we'll go to church with you. And, uh, met him at their church and I walked in the front door and I looked up right before I walked into the chapel and there was a sign over that door that said, God measures your love by your tithings. Oh, Wow. I lost my abs. I lost my mind. I flipped around and left and I didn't set foot in a church again. True story until I met Miss J, which would have been we, this will be our 2003, 2000. Okay. We will be together 14 years in June. We've been married 13 this year. Um, and so I was in my early twenties when that happened and I was just like, (laughs) you ain't telling me that Joe millionaire over here is going to get into heaven quicker than me because he's padding the pastor's pocket, right? You can't buy your way in. No, 
And so I, you know, that really turned me off. And then, you know, of course, my my wife, Ms. J, her granddaddy was a pastor and he was a fire and brimstone pastor. I mean, he brought it when he preached. Right. Yeah. Um, there were no it, it was no games. I mean, he was one of them church tent guys. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, you know, we just started. She's the one that led me back and And the first three years that we were together and that's including the first two and a half years that we were married, she could have divorced me at any given time because of my my drug issues, my alcohol issues, my pornography issues, yeah. my lying, um, my cheating, my stealing, my you name it. I mean, you know, I had caught my my second wife, Ms. J's my third wife. <laughs> uh, they they say the third time's a charm, and I truly believe that. But yeah, you know, I was in law enforcement. I caught my second wife literally in bed with my best friend. Wow. And and that was the beginning of my demise. Yeah, that was my downward spiral. Um, to where I mean I was in the bottom of the bucket, but um, you know, people ask Miss J, why did you ever stay with him if he was that much of a you know a, a delinquent? And she said because God told me He had a plan for us. It wasn't about me and it wasn't about him. The it was a plan about us together. Yeah. Well, that plan, come to find out, was Deuce Outfitters Ministry. That's awesome. And it just, you know, connected us to where it's like she's my right brain, I'm her left brain. And, you know, it just, it's amazing what just having the faith the size of a mustard seed. And I don't know if you've ever seen a mustard seed, yeah. but it's about the size of the head of a stick pin. Yep. That's all the faith that it takes. And it's about having that conversation with Jesus and trusting in what he tells you. I agree. That's it. It's not about rules and regulations and having to live the perfect life because nobody can do it. And I'm here to tell you, I'm a pastor. I'm an ordained pastor. It's not about being the perfect little church mouse because we're all going to screw up. Yep. Right. I mean, that's the reality of it. When our daughter passed away here, it'll be four weeks Thursday. I cannot tell you how bad the craving was for me to dive into the bottom of a bottle. Dude, I'm a pastor. I should be by that. Right. No, not no. necessarily. <laughs> no, I'm still a man. Yeah. Being a pastor is what I do. It doesn't identify me as who I am. Yeah. So, you know, with us, there's no judgment. You can, they're they're just, there can't be. Yeah, I agree. Because I'm no better than you. Yep. Our sin's just different. What we call our sin is different. Yep. You know, and, and that's what it takes. And that's what it takes to reach people is to be willing to meet them right where they're at. It doesn't matter how ugly it is, but be willing to wade in there with them and say, man, I got you. That's my favorite saying. I got you. Yeah. And I'm going to pull you out of this. I agree. Um, and, and, you know, the, the other thing, too, is, is I've talked to a lot of organizations that are, you know, that deal with hunting and, and outdoors. And I'll be honest, man, I think those are one of the best organizations out there. And and the reason why is because you do everything throughout that day, especially if there's like instructional to it. You know, if you're teaching them how to hunt, what to look for, you know, when they go out there, they're not just sitting in a in a deer stand by themselves thinking with a gun in their hands. You know, they, they have structures, they have things that they're paying attention to, you know, and and it takes their mind completely off of the problems, you know? Absolutely. And, 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 you know, one of the key things, so number one, we're dry. We don't allow any alcohol, none of that. But the other thing is, is we truly encourage these guys to stay off of their cell phone. Yeah. I mean, 
disconnect. I mean, you know, granted have it because, you know, especially like if I, if I'm working a set of three veterans and I'm placing guys here, here and there, I want to be able to communicate with all of them. Yeah. But as far as cruising the internet and this, that, and the other, we encourage them, man, disconnect that sucker. Yep. Call your family, you know, during lunch and, you know, when we're taking the afternoon break and, and call her in the evening, you know, when we get back in and then maybe call her right before you go to bed. We encourage that. We want you to have more contact with your family. But as right. far as, as being connected to the outside world, I'm like, dude, why would you want to be a part of that anyway? Yeah. You don't it's, need to come here to do that. Yeah. It's yeah. a mess. Why do you want to, why do you want to, you know, muddy up something that has, you know, that really is beautiful. You know, yeah. you sit on these ridges out here in Western Nebraska, watching a herd of mule deer or watching a, you know, a flock of turkey or, or what, whatever it is that you're hunting. And I tell you what, it will, it will put your mind where it needs to be, you know, um, and, and I, I'm a big archery hunter. I'm not much for long guns anymore. And Fred Bear said it best, you know, if, if hunting is about the kill to you, then you're missing it. Yeah. Because there is so much that occurs before you ever send that arrow or before you ever squeeze that trigger. Yeah. And if you'll just watch the world wake up and watch what happens in the, that world. There's times, you know, AJ, he's our, um, he's the head of our marketing and, and uh, he does, does all our design work for our apparel and our logos and stuff. And we have a property, it's called um, the sanctuary and it's about a mile worth of river bottom. And that's that is just a sacred place. I mean, it just I've watched it change people. I mean, within hours, a couple wow. hours. And uh, a, a, so last year during rifle season, you know, AJ's veteran that he had been assigned to, they filled his that family's tags that first morning. And there really wasn't much for him to do. And he's like, dude do you mind it? Can you take me out to the sanctuary just so I can hang out? And he said, cause he'd never been there. I mean, and, and I'm like, shoot, absolutely. And so I took him out there and, you know, it was after dark before I got to him because I was running deer around to the processor and all this, that, and the other. And mm -hmm. I get out there and, and I see him coming walking at me and he's just, you know, he's kind of got his head down and he's, he's walking and, I opened my door and I go, is everything okay? And he just threw his arms around me and was almost in tears. And he said, thank you. And I said, for what? And he said, dude, you weren't lying. This place heals your soul. And he said, I can't tell you how many big white tailed deer I saw and this and that and the other and the connection that, I, you know, he was just telling me how this whole story played out. And he said, this is the most memorable, hunt, memorable hunt I've ever been on. And That's I didn't awesome. even squeeze it. He, he said, well, he didn't even have a gun with him. He just went out there and sat in a tree stand empty handed. Yeah. And he's like, dude, he's, he's like, that was the most memorable hunt that I've ever been on in my entire life. And so he had a deer tag and in Nebraska, white tail and mule deer, as you know, a deer is a deer. Yeah. There's no, and, he, and we got done eating. I said, how'd you like to go out there and, and hunt one of them big old white tails? And he's like, nah, you're not serious. I said, yeah. I said, there's four shooters out there that are, that are 170 class deer. And there's a reason why they're 170 class because we never, we've never hunted deer on it. We wanted them to grow. And he's like, seriously? And I'm like, yeah. And uh, the next day he harvested one of those big old white tail mute on deer. <laughs> That's awesome. And he was just like, this is the most memorable hunt I have ever had. And it's 
so it's, and I guess what I'm trying to get across is it's not, it, it was the most memorable hunt he ever had before he ever even had a gun in his hand. Yeah. Because he was able to disconnect and, and drown out the noise and just be still. Yeah. And, and watch the world around him and see how really, truly beautiful the world can be if yep. you drowned out all the noise in the racket. Yep. And I, you know, that's the key right there is, is all the, the stuff that is surrounding America right now, all this noise. You don't know. I, I can't count how many people try to, to message me and get on my page and, and they want to talk about gun rights and abortion rights and all the, the stuff. And I, you know, I said, that's not what this page is about. This page is about healing veterans. We don't need people coming in there to antagonize and, and create arguments and bring that outside noise in. You're more than welcome to have your personal views, but this ain't about politics, you know? Wow. And, and I had a guy, he, 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 he was a, he was a smart ass man. And he, uh, he got on there and uh, he sent me a message. He said, Ooh, they're coming for your guns, Mr. Redneck. And uh, all I responded back with was, I ain't worried about that. for my cold, dead hands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I said, I, said I, I, I ain't worried about that. And he said, well, everybody else is. Maybe you should tell everybody else that. And I said, uh, you know, I'll, I'll leave that for the other guy with the tinfoil on his hat. You know, that's his podcast. That ain't mine. And he that's goes, right. uh, he goes, well, you should, you should say that in your podcast. I said, I'd rather use my, my voice to get my brothers to stop hurting themselves yes. than to argue over something I have zero control over like guns. Yes. You know? Yeah. And all it is, is it, it all it is, is a money thing. It's yeah. all about money. I agree. Once again, you know, and, and that's another thing I hate social media about, you know? So it's, it's, it's like you said about the finances, it's a necessary evil, you know, yeah. it, without Facebook and stuff like that, I wouldn't reach nearly the amount of people that, that I do. And uh, that other side of the n noise is I, I completely disagree with things like TikTok and these, these Facebook reels where they're taking everybody's attention span and they're putting it in a 30 second block. And after that, you get so used to just, and I was there, man, when you know, I was on TikTok and the reels, and I just found myself doing this nonstop. If I yeah. wasn't satisfied and happy in, in a few seconds, I was just, you know, and I um, got to thinking, man, I was like, you know, how much good information did I miss? Because I didn't like the way his intro was or the way this and that was, you know, so I completely quit. I don't put, I don't put stuff on Facebook reels no more. I, you know, I don't do any of that stuff because I don't no. want veterans to get that, you know, and yeah. I just, I don't think it's healthy, man. No, no, because life is more than 30 seconds. Yeah. And, and when we're battling the suicide epidemic, I mean, think about it. That decision is made in 30 seconds. Yeah. And we want to, that frame of mind, we want to pull them out of that and understand that it's a 30 second moment that you're experiencing. Yeah. And, and we, so we need to, we need to break that chain and, and help them to realize that, dude, you know, think about the, the, the hunt that you were on with us six months ago, or think about the, you know, one of the key things that here that everybody that the has gotten around is Ms. J's family biscuits. Um, she's had veterans literally say, I will buy the recipe off of you so I can put it in my restaurant or open a restaurant. And she's like, dude, that is a family recipe. My mother doesn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, and I've gone to the extent of her mom saying, Jay, I'd really like to know how you make those. And I'm like, it's a family recipe, mom. And she's like, well, what do you call me? And I said, not family enough. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. I don't even know the recipe. Yeah, you know? absolutely. But, it you know, is. half of that is that is the cooking and the camaraderie, yeah. you know, breaking bread around the table, you know, four, three, four, five guys 
and and being able to talk and and really not having to say anything of any importance yeah just talking what's on your heart and and not talking about i'll be honest with you i haven't watched the news since when all of this stuff happened with Trump when he was in office for the first impeachment, mm -hmm. at that point, I knew that news was a bunch of hokey. Yep. And at that point, I just quit watching all news, local, world. I just, I'm done. Yep. Because irregardless of what's happening in the world, there's nothing I can do to affect it. Nope. And, and you I don't do, know what's true anymore. Exactly. And so what I can control and can, and, and can, and make an impact on is you yeah. calling and checking on you or being available for you when you need yeah. somebody to talk to. Those are things that I can control. Yeah. And if I can keep you from, you know, not on the end of a nine, then I've had a good day. Yeah. And, and, and I, I and, completely agree. Yeah. You know, keeping, keeping veterans, more focused on their, their self-healing is way more important than anything that's going on in Congress. I, uh, I promise absolutely. you. I promise you it is. <laughs> well, because everything, all Congress is, is a bunch of, of guys that, that got in there. It wasn't meant to be a career and a life-changing career on top of it. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and then it, 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 it's all about who's going to pay the, the most money to, to get a bill passed or to get it blocked. Well, how is that government? Well, I don't want to know. I don't care anymore. It's gotten so big that, you know, it's, it's out of control. You know, it's, it's well, and the thing is, is if those, if those, um, I, and I don't know how to put it nice, if these retarded leftists think that they're going to come get our guns, <laughs> How do you think we're going to defend them, those guns? Yeah. You don't have any guns. We do. Yeah. And if you think that you're going to talk to our active duty military and get them convinced to come after citizens and, and veterans, you fell and bumped your head. They couldn't get them to come around and take a shot. No. <laughs> And so it's like, you need, you know, regardless of what laws you pass, if, if you outlaw guns and I'm an outlaw, I'm sorry. I'm all right with that. I, I have come to terms with that. Yep. You know, so let's just quit playing the power games and let's try to impact where we can make a difference with things that make a difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, if somebody wants to sign up for your program, what's, what's the best way for them to, to reach out to you? So real, all they got to do is, is they can email us. They can go through our webpage, which is www.deuce and deuce is spelled D O O S E um, outfittersministry.com. Um, you can call me personally at 308-641-2162. Um, typically I answer if I don't, I can guarantee you, I will either message you back or I'll call you back. Absolutely. I can um, vouch for that. Yeah. So, I mean, regardless of, of what the situation is, you know, um, and we have a conversation, you know, that's mm -hmm. what relationships are built on is, is conversation. And, and I'm a believer in, relationships that's what's going to impact the world is yep. positive relationships i agree so does the veterans need anything like a dd214 or something to prove that they were you know you know in the you know we vet them a little bit you know we talk to them and you know we it seems like most of them come to our facebook page anyway before they ever contact us yeah and, you know, ask us to be friends or they start following the ministry page. And, and, uh, you know, so there's, there is a vetting process. I know that our board has started talking about, um, potentially doing a, a small questionnaire. And unfortunately in today's day and age, 
you almost have to because mm-hmm. there are those individuals that um are, they're scam artists i mean yeah. they're wanting something for nothing um we are 100 percent donation based Yep. We're, we're trying to uh, alleviate anything, any uh, stress on the veteran, but we, we also ask the veteran, you know, if this is a program that helped you, pay it forward, leave a donation for the next guy. It doesn't matter if it's $50 or $500, yeah. you know, it's, it's the heart that's behind it that's paying it forward for your brother that's coming from behind you. I completely agree. You know, so, um, you know, it really, it is, it's, it's a fairly simple process. We don't want it to be difficult. We don't want, because here's the thing, as a veteran, you get the runaround from the VA, right? Yep. And what pisses you off any more than that? Yep. Absolutely nothing. And and it makes you look negative against that next source of help that might be the one that helps you. you Absolutely. So we don't want to create a a runaround system, you know, take a picture of your DD2 and send, you know, and and text it to me and it's done. Yeah. It's that simple, you know, Um, but, you know, it's just, it's like I've said from day one, for us, it's about our walk and our talk matching up. Absolutely. and if, if we do that and we're transparent, that's going to speak volumes. Yeah. yeah, It's about creating a family, a tribe, because let's be honest, as a war fighter, you know, the, one of the things you miss is the tribe, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, that's, when you come out of it, you don't have the tribe anymore. When, when you walk away from the military, you learn real quick how, how unimportant you become. You know, Absolutely. you literally become somebody around a bunch of people that don't care anymore. Yeah. You know, and we don't want that. We want you. We encourage you, honestly, to call us. I've got veterans that call me every other day or once a week and just awesome. say, I just wanted to check on you to make sure you're OK. Because, awesome. you know, as well as I do, you know, being and and I use this term very loosely, so don't take it out of context, being the guy, you never think about yourself. You're right. You're always pushing and you're always worried about the team, the family, the tribe that, and, and that's the way I am. You know, I've had guys, our, our own team are like, dude, nobody's asked you, but how are you doing? Yeah. And, and it's nice when the veteran calls you up and says, man, I just, you've been on my mind. You've been on my heart. Are you all right? Everything. What can I do? Yeah. You know, and when you, when, when you're getting those kinds of phone calls, you know, you're doing it the right way. I agree. I absolutely agree. You know, you know, Steiner is like a brother to me, you know, and, and that hero stock that, that, that we're, uh, that he's working on, that we're been blessed to be a part of it that thing's going to be a, a a game changer for veterans. Yeah. I I mean, you know, and, and Jason does it from the right standpoint because he's got a heart bigger than Dallas. Yeah. That dude is amazing. I mean, he's just a solid man that as a, as a, as a person and as a, uh, as an organization, we've been very, very blessed to be a part of, of him and what he's doing. And so, you know, and, and honestly, that's how it should be, you know, it should be networking, working yeah. together, because if we're all working towards the same goal, why would we not want to work together yeah. versus everybody scrapping for this little piece of pie that the federal government's trying to put out or the VA's trying to put out and they're cutting throats to get that piece of yeah. pie. And I'm just like, I don't want no part of it. Yeah, I don't either. I want to be the grassroots mom, pa operation, or at this point, you know, it's the grandma, grandpa operation. <laughs> Shoot. We got 10 grandbabies and we got two great, three great grandbabies. Wow. So, you know, it's, 
I want to be that guy Yeah. that it's just like, you can call me up and say, Hey, you got anything going on? No. Yep. You mind if I come out? No. Coffee pots on. I got a jar of sweet tea for you. We'll sit under the shade tree and we'll work it out. Yep. And, and that's, that's exactly where I'm at, you know, with, with what I'm doing. I want to just, I wanted to always be focused on helping networking and however I can get in there to help and do my part. That's what I'm about. You know, I don't want, I don't need to be the next Joe Rogan and, and do this multimillion because you lose focus, you know, you do. And I don't, I don't want that. You lose, you lose who you are. Yeah. I think, and I'm not saying anything about, about Joe Rogan. Don't get me wrong. Right, right. I listen to his podcast all too. the time. I love it, but that's not me. Yeah. It's not me either. And I'm and, not and, that guy. And his podcast isn't about necessarily helping one person, you know, it's more of an informative. So that's fine for him. Yeah. But, but when, when you have a mission, you, you, you can't, you can't beat Iraq from, you know, the States. You got to go to Iraq. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, and that's where we're at. Yeah. And if, if we can come together and network as teams, you know, as a, is a, is a unit and attack this, this epidemic, we can, we can make serious changes, but if we're so concerned about the scraps that are being left on the table, dude, it ain't going to happen. I mean, yeah. it's just we're beating each other up for no reason. I, I'll tell you something funny. You know, earlier I, I was talking about how, uh, you know, I, I became really concerned about homeless veterans. And uh, so this winter, or, you know, this late uh, summer, early fall, I got with uh, the Contagion Effect, um, Shadow Marks podcast and, and myself when we started talking. I was already going to do a, a, a jacket raise where you're trying to get as many jackets and rain gear and blankets and stuff. And I was going to go down to the, the homeless shelter around here and, and start donating to, to the veterans and, and handing them out. And uh, I said, you know, let me get with these guys and see if they want to help. And the TJ from the shadow Mark, he said, you know what? He said, we should make it a competition. And he said, we'll call it, we'll call it the jacket off. <laughs> <And> <laughs> I said, I absolutely love that. I right? said, I, I will buy the trophy and whichever podcast gets the most jackets or, or most gear to donate, you know, they'll, they'll win the trophy and they can have it. You know, that that's amazing. So that's what we're going to do, you know? Nice. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's fun. It's entertaining, but it's, it's about keeping people warm. It is. You know? It's about making an impact. Nobody says that making an impact has to be gut wrenching and yeah. and you know there yeah at times it is I mean you you know at times the stories do get to you I mean I can remember doing speaking engagements when for me it's so heartfelt that I couldn't make it through the number without tearing up and choking yeah. I mean to where I couldn't swallow yeah you know, and, and make it through without that. And, and now it's like, you know, my wife is like, it's okay to be that transparent because at least people know that it, it, what you're telling them and what you're feeling is real. Yeah. You're not blowing smoke, but it doesn't have to be like that all the time. I mean, these guys don't come out here. Number one, to have us in their face or number two, to join that pity party with them. They come out here because they want to experience something better. And, and by doing that, you know, if you can, and, and we all know how, how war heroes humor is, right? I mean, yeah. you know, and so it, it's dark, but if, you know, even in the worst of situations, if, if you can kind of, you know, make a funny out of it and lighten yeah. it, it seems to make a difference. That's kind of where our our name came from, you know? So when we first started this show, it was me and my old first son and uh, he had a little uh, gun business. And so we spent a lot of time in his gun room, you know, messing with guns. And uh, that's where the gun room came from. 
And both of us like to drink. You know, at that time I drank a lot more now. You know, I might drink maybe one beer. I see your I see what you got back there, little maker's mark, a yeah, little yep, yep. knob creek. Dude, yep. you need to get on the Pendleton. Drink something that's quality, would you? Really? I, I actually <laughs> like that stuff. You know, my, my favorite bourbon is $32 a bottle. It's called uh, Walker Clay. It's hard to find, but it's not expensive, man. It's it's good stuff, you know. But uh that's that's where the name came from. And and we were trying to you know, we were just trying to get the, the veterans to uh, laugh and, and relate. We were trying to be relatable to them, you know, and a lot of people took offensive to, to the name, but I don't sure. You know, you, you can't, you, you can't take things. And I, that's what's happened to America is yeah. they've just taken things to, they take things too serious. Yeah. I, you know? I agree. Um, and, and I joke, you know, I poke fun at you with your, with your flavor. I was just, a, I was a Canadian whiskey guy and Pendleton yeah. was my drink. And, yeah. and my wife will tell you, man, it, it was like water. Cause I drank it on the rocks and it was like, I'd grab a low ball of ice in the bottle, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And she's like, you're not going to drink that with anything. I said, I am ice. <laughs> and she's like, really? I'm like, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, but I, uh, of course, you know, that that led me down another dark path that I just don't care to go there any ever again. Yeah. You know, it's just I can get so much more out of a good cup of coffee or a nice glass of sweet tea that Miss J makes me that, yeah. you know, there's been times I'm like, man, an ice cold beer. Oh, yeah. You know, it's 100 degrees out. Just got done mowing yep. on sweating like a dog. And I'm like, yeah, I want an ice cold beer. And, and of course, I've got beer in my fridge. Of course, it's NA beer because, you know, and so I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have in an, an ice cold beer and I'll come walking in. And and she's like, hey, baby, what are you doing? I said, it ain't sweet tea made. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do. I said, man, I'd like to have a big ice cold glass of that. Yep. So, yeah. So, you know, it's yep. it's crazy i agree uh, well chris I, I appreciate you coming on the show man and uh, man it's been a blast it yeah. has you know i i've enjoyed it i hope that i hope that we put some good information out there that you know we we were encouraging not only to veterans but to uh to other organizations you know absolutely um you know the key thing is quit taking yourself so serious even as an organization yeah um work together with people because you can make a big difference and and uh like i said jason steiner and that that the hero stock that thing that thing's going to be huge yeah. and i truly believe that thing's going to turn into a nationwide event that'll be that's awesome. going to make that's going to make the sturgis bike rally look like peanuts <laughs> you know and, and especially and if you get a bunch of veterans in there yep you know so um you know, there's just, there's a lot of good things happening. We just got to be patient, let it work itself out, you know, let it roll out. And, you know, uh, especially with us right now, like I said, you know, the key thing that's, that's keeping us from getting through the ceiling of stage three into stage four, which is the, uh, the um, equine therapy program is raising that down payment. Yeah. And so, uh, man, if, if you, anybody hears this and they have a heart for it, you know, we are a registered 501 C three, so it's tax deductible. And the quicker that we can get that down payment going, the quicker we can get the program going and the quicker we can start impacting lives and families, you know, That's because awesome. it's for us, it's about the family as well. We wow. want to get a veteran and his family out here and, and let them heal together. I told I told Jason, you know, when when he told me about your guys' organization and and the uh, the ramps that you guys are trying to get, I said if there, you know, if you guys have a a fundraiser somehow that you guys want to do that, me and some of these other podcasters can be a part of, just let us know. However, we can help to to raise that money. I am all about it. You know, whatever. It you takes. know, I I think a lot of it is just basically 
bringing it up in conversation. Okay. You know, I've always been a firm believer in work one conversation away. You know, it may not be you, but it could be somebody that you know that, you know, I tell it to you and you're like, you know what? I can't help you from the financial side of it, but I know a guy and this is right up his alley. So it's just having those conversations and, and just not being afraid to talk. I mean, we're so worried about asking people for help. Yeah. Like a veteran is, you know, and it's like, how can they say no if you don't even give them the opportunity to say no? Yeah. You got a 50 50 chance of it being yes. Well, I promise you, you will see a bunch of information trying to, to get the word out from your guys' organization on my page. I, I can promise you that. Well, I tell you what, my man, this has been this has been truly a joy and, and welcome to our family. I you're part it. of the of the Deuce family and, and your your podcast. You know, it should have been one drunk and a re- and a recovered drunk, yeah, or yeah. or two recovered drunks, or however that looks. Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, you, you, know. you said it right. You said it right. <laughs> one recovered and <laughs> the other one's not. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, we welcome your podcast, our family as well, because it's an information network, yeah. and the only way we can get get the word out is to network and to get it out there. So. I agree. Kudos, man. You're doing a great job. It's been an absolute pleasure and an honor to be a part of your program. Yes, sir. I, I appreciate you. I appreciate you guys coming on. Absolutely, brother. You take care and uh, I'll be in touch. And, and like I said, man, we'll, 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 uh, we'll get together. We got each other's phone number, so you'll, you'll hear yeah, from me. All right, brother. All right. You guys have a good night. Be safe. You too, man. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.